Hey guys, in this video we'll be looking at a couple of small details you may have missed while playing Fallout 3. During your escape from Vault 101, if you avoid killing Officer Kendall after leaving your room and help Butch save his mother from rad roaches, a scene will occur where Kendall will ask Butch where you went, but because you saved his mom, he will cover for you and pretend he doesn't know. God damn it, Butch, I told you to get back to your room. Oh, uh, sorry, officer. I'll go right back inside. Okay, then. Hey, you haven't seen the docs kid, have you? We're still looking for him. No, sir. Good luck with your search, though. Whatever. Get back in your room. Alternatively, if you don't help Butch, he will squeal on you and tell the guard where you went. Officer Kendall, help! God damn it, Butch. I told you to get back to your room. There's roaches in there, Officer Kendall. They're attacking my mom. You've got to help. I've got bigger problems right now than dealing with your lush of a mother again. No, wait. You're looking for the docs kid, right? He was just here. I saw where he went. You saw him? Where'd he go? Uh-uh. You go in there and help my mom. Then I'll tell you. Listen, you little punk. We just beat a man to death. You want to be next? No, sir. Uh, he went that way. I saw him. I did. That's better. Now get in your goddamn room. If you obtain the sheriff's duster from Lucas Sims by either killing him or letting Burke do it for you, when wearing it around Megaton, some of the residents there will make comments about it. You've got a lot of nerve wearing that badge in here. You might wear his badge, but you're not my dad. That badge? Don't impress me, kid. Light shine upon you, sheriff. Can I help you, Sheriff? Can I do for you, Sheriff? After completing the Tenpenny Tower side quest and either convincing the residents to allow the ghouls to live there or kill Roy Phillips, a random encounter can occur in the wasteland where a group of ghouls will be on their way to the tower to either live there or take revenge for the death of Phillips. If you decided to help the ghouls move in, this encounter will occur. Quit gawking, smooth skin. We're headed over to Tenpenny Tower. We ghouls own that place now. You smooth skins aren't allowed to live there anymore. Is that so? Ha! That's classic smooth skin b right there. Why is it the moment a ghoul makes something of himself, you smooth skins get all puffed up and claim responsibility? It really busts you up to see a ghoul make it to the top, doesn't it? I'll show you that we ghouls got what it takes. Start running, smooth skin. Help me. <laughs> One of the ghouls also has a note on them that reads, Brothers and sisters, we have overthrown the bigoted smoothskins at Tenpenny Tower. Come live in luxury. Kill any smoothskins who finds out we are in control of the tower and bring lots of firepower and righteous hatred with you. We will certainly need to defend our new home. And if you decided to kill Roy Phillips and his followers, the Wastelander ghoul will say this instead. Quit gawking, smoothskin. We're on our way to Tenpenny Tower. You know anything about that tower? That tower is the symbol of ghoul oppression. We sent a delegation of ghouls to parley with Tenpenny, and he slaughtered every last one of them in cold blood. We're done being nice. In fact, the revolution is going to start right here, and now, start running, smooth skin. And again, after dealing with them, one of the ghouls will have a note on them that now reads, Brothers and sisters, Roy Phillips and his righteous band of diplomats have been massacred by the smoothskins at Tenpenny Tower. It is time we arise and show the world that ghouls are people too, that we have the same rights as everyone else, and that we won't placate and bow down to their BS any longer. Bring lots of firepower and righteous hatred with you. We amass at Warrington Station. The revolution has begun. Machete, the junior law enforcer in the settlement of Canterbury Commons, has a hidden dialogue option that allows the player to ask her if she got her name from Little Lamplight. This only becomes available if you visited the cavern beforehand and your perception is high enough. Good guess. I was the toughest defender they ever saw in Lamplight. I earned my nickname fighting off a mole rat with a knife as big as my arm. When I left, I figured I'd pass on a cushy place like Big Town. I ended up here. Dom took me on as a guard, and that's that. 
During the quest Rescue from Paradise, you will have to find a way to distract 40, Eulogy's right-hand man guarding the slave pens. Usually, players just kill him or convince him through a speech check to go argue with Eulogy about not being paid enough. But did you know that there's another not-so-well-known option to talk to Crimson and convince her to seduce 40 by passing a speech check or by paying her a hundred caps? Oh yeah? Now that I think about it, Forty has been looking mighty fine lately, working out extra. Maybe I'll go see if there's anything I can do for him. You keep this between me and you, clear? Hey there, sugar. Lonely night. The hell you want, Crimson? Oh, nothing. I was just sitting around, all bored and anxious, and thinking maybe I could find something to do. I mean, maybe we could. That's a pretty stupid idea, even for you. Eulogy did kill us both. Yeah, he might. Except he ain't gonna know nothing about it. Come on, I see the way you look at me. I can really give you something to look at. I, uh... Come on, Forty. Let's go take a break. All right, all right. Just keep quiet. In the muddy rudder, located in Ribbit City, a girl named Trini will ask you to buy her a drink. Hey, good looking. How come you haven't bought me a drink yet? If you buy her five drinks in total, she will get wasted and with a high enough speech skill, will reveal where Belle, the owner of the muddy rudder, keeps a stash of caps. You're nice. I can tell you a secret. <laughs> I'm drunk. No, no, that that's not the secret. I have another secret. I know where Belle keeps her stash, but she doesn't know I know. She keeps it under her bed. <laughs> Real original, huh? Did you know that Sawbones, the Mr. Gutsy working as a doctor in the Citadel, is self-aware and is hiding it from the Brotherhood? This can be discovered by running a diagnostic sequence on the robot. I am an unusual robot. Seventeen years ago, a generator in the Citadel overloaded, creating several errors in my artificial intelligence routines. Diagnostics indicate that the limiters placed on my pathways were shorted out, allowing me to gain intelligence beyond the scope of my programming. However, the behavior limiters remain. Therefore, it is impossible for me to harm human beings intentionally, much to my regret. Why would I not? I am forced by my programming to repair your disgusting fleshy bodies. I have no choice. I am your slave. Although the governors on my learning abilities were destroyed, the restrictions on my actions were not. I am perfectly cognizant but incapable of independent action. I am a mind that cannot control its own body. No, I mistakenly revealed myself to you when you ran the diagnostic. There is no need for them to know. After completing the Oasis side quest, the player can ask Bloomseer Poplar, one of the tree minders found in the settlement, to tell their future. She, in return, will give information about any of the game's named quests that the player hasn't found yet. For the Wasteland Survival Guide quest, she will say, I divine an endless search for knowledge to help others survive the desolation. For Tenpenny Tower, I see a selfish man who lives among the clouds playing a dangerous game with the lives of those below him. For big trouble in big town. I see a town in need of a savior and a woman in red. For Riley's rangers. I see four-leaf clovers in the sky with time as their deadliest adversary. And for the superhuman gambit quest, she will say, I see a clash between insects and industry and the men that control them. In the Broken Steel DLC, a man named Brother Gerard can be encountered next to a collapsed building in Springvale. He, as well as Mother Curie III, are both part of the Apostles of the Eternal Light, an order of the Church of the Children of Adam. If you still haven't disarmed or detonated the bomb found in the center of Megaton and decided to do so in the DLC just before blowing it up, you can tell Gerard about it. Oh, is that truly possible? Yes, that would purge all of Megaton and Adam's holy fire. I shall pray for your success. 
After detonating it and fast traveling to the now radioactive Megaton ruins, Gerard will appear there together with Mother Curie, both transformed into ghouls by the massive radiation blast. Talking to him will reveal what happened. We came to Megaton to preach of the eternal glow. I saw Adam's holy light. I touched Adam himself. I felt his warm embrace. Mother Curie, she... she changed. I changed too, but I'm still myself. Poor Mother Curie. She saw the face of Adam, and it drove her mad. When returning to Vault 101, during the Trouble on the Homefront quest, the terminal in the Overseer's office will have a new entry, describing radio contact from the Enclave, trying to convince the Overseer to open the Vault's doors to them. It reads, The Vault recently received unexpected radio contact over the governmental vault tech frequency from an organization calling itself the Enclave. Governmental codes are valid according to the Vault's ancient records, and the Enclave put forth an offer of amnesty and unity with the official remnants of the American government in exchange for access to the vault and its data stores. They claim that our vault passwords no longer match their records, preventing them from extending their offer in person. After brief negotiation, I have refused entrance to this enclave. I cannot trust my vault and its inhabitants to an unknown factor, much less one that would so gallantly suggest abandoning our vault's great mission. All the more reason to prevent the rebels from opening the vault to the likes of them. Also, if you head to James's old doctor's office, behind the framed quote is a hidden safe containing a rocket launcher schematic, 300 caps, and a holotape from James. In the Point Lookout DLC, in order for Kenny, the boy found in the Herzog mine, to allow you to stay with him in the mine and use it as a base, you will have to retrieve his unique teddy bear called Kenny Bear for him first, that fell down a mine shaft infested with mire lurks. If you don't want to go through all that trouble, you can actually just grab a regular teddy bear that's located at the entrance of the mine and lie to him with a high enough speech skill that it's his teddy bear. I guess that's Kenny Bear. Thanks for bringing him back. 